think that's enough bagpipes for one afternoon because it's time to start our live show. I was liking that. It was kind of fun. It was a lot of fun. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of TFL Now Live. Uh, today we're talking about crossovers. Get excited. Get ready. It's the scourge of the industry. No, it's not. They've just become extremely popular over the past few years, outpacing traditional cars in sales, well, by a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, however, performance crossovers are starting to catch on, and we'll start talking about a few of those in a minute. Um, but the introduction of crossovers has, you know, it's, it's meant to decline for more traditional cars around the industry, which we want to remember those cars today. Uh, so we're, we're going to be talking about today some of the crossovers that have killed off a lot of traditional cars, uh, at least in the United States. And fun cars at that. Yeah, definitely a lot of those are very fun cars. Uh, so to clarify something right ahead uh, of the show, we're not saying that the crossovers we talk about here are bad. We're not trying to say that crossovers are bad cars. Uh, but the automaker's decision to build crossovers instead of more traditional cars have meant that some of these cars, which were really, really fun, uh, have gone the way of the dodo. Keep this in mind. They wouldn't build those crossovers if you guys didn't want them. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's supply and demand, right? So, I mean, it's gone from being every automaker had a crossover or even a couple crossovers to every automaker has a disproportionate amount of crossovers versus sedans and hatchbacks. Every automaker has like one crossover for each size classification. Now there's compact, subcompact, mid-size, full-size crossovers for like six different manufacturers have at least all four of those. And we're not counting SUVs in this either, by no, the way. SUVs, we usually, uh, SUVs are frame-based, truck-like. But to give this all some context, uh, we, th we should talk about what inspired today's show. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ford introduced the Fiesta ST line as a, there it is, as a sort of send-off for the model. And it looks like a Fiesta ST, ST but it's not. Uh, it still has just the normal 1.6 liter engine, uh, normally aspirated, 120 horsepower and 112 pound-feet of torque. But they've done a bunch of well, aesthetic modifications like these wheels, the black painted roof fancy paint color to make it look like a sporty ST model, kind of like the R-Line trim uh, with Volkswagen or R-Design trim at Volvo. Uh, so why would they do this and not just bring us a new Fiesta ST? That's kind of the question. Uh, my theory is that they had an overstock of engines that were on the smaller displacement side and they decided, hey, what a good way to get rid of them, make the car look a little bit better before we completely phase it out of the industry. Well, and they're going to phase it out because it won't sell, and what will sell is crossovers, mm -hmm. uh, which takes us to the list. So the list today is the manufacturers that are killing off their cars in favor of crossovers. Uh, and the first manufacturer on that list is Ford, who has uh, recently at the Detroit Auto Show introduced the Ford Edge ST. Tell us a little bit about the Edge ST. The Ford Edge ST has an EcoBoost engine, 2.7 liter uh, power plant. I don't know what was the output of that. It's three hundred thirty-five horsepower 335, and uh, three hundred eighty pound-feet of torque. So on a vehicle that size, it should be really fast. Bear in mind, all-wheel drive, and they really put an emphasis on the fact that it's been track tested and it handles really, really well. They even hinted that it could handle as well as some of their vehicles that it's replacing, such as the Focus ST. They didn't say the Focus R. Yeah, 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 I don't know about that. Mm. Um, the Explorer ST, as well, we know is coming. Uh, it's going to be a rear wheel drive based platform. Yep. Uh, but, you know, Ford has brought these two new ST crossovers. They're going to get rid of the Fiesta ST, yep. the Focus ST, the Focus RS, and the Taurus Show. Uh, they're all going to be gone for good. Which is really disappointing, and we all we both have personal experience with at least all three of these cars. Mm -hmm. You probably have more experience with the Taurus than I do. Mm -hmm. um, we own a Fiesta ST. Yep, it's super fun, a great little track car, great gas mileage. It looks fantastic. There, I see nothing wrong with that package. Seventeen grand, eighteen grand, uh, and you can have one of those in your driveway. The Focus ST also super duper fun, a torquey little engine, a great chassis. Really good handling car. Comes with a manual transmission. Focus RS is the Focus ST on steroids with all-wheel drive, 350 horsepower. Uh, I had the chance to drive not on the Nürburgring in a Focus RS, but around the surrounding villages around the Nürburgring uh, in that color. It's a really awesome car, really fast. Uh, and the show is kind of a, an interesting sleeper pick. 
at the same time. Yeah, and it's also part of a performance package that some police departments have used and whatnot. Now, the mm -hmm. bottom line is that they are being replaced by these crossovers. And we're kind of curious to your point of view. What do you guys think of it? Because Ford announced that they are going to basically only build crossovers with the exception of the Ford Mustang. Now, initially, they were going to be selling the, which was sort of a crossover, the Focus Active, yeah, but... which was built in China. By the way, for those of you who may have uh, misconceptions about this, that was the only vehicle they were going to bring over to the United States from China. All their other vehicles are built pretty much here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason they're not bringing it over is because of certain issues with tariffs and whatnot. That's according to Ford. But uh, that vehicle was being built there, but under the supervision of Ford as such, I'm sure the quality wouldn't have been too bad. I heard good things. Bottom line is we're not going to get it. Yeah. Which means Ford's base model vehicle in the very near future is going to be the Echo Sport. <laughs> not the Echo Sport, the Echo Sport. That's according to Ford. Uh, will they make an ST version of that? That's the question. So that could really wake up that car. That could be interesting. Actually. It could be interesting. But Ford is going full bore into crossovers, SUVs, and trucks. And as a result, cars like the Fiesta ST, Focus ST, Focus RS, and the Taurus Show, they're out of here. They're gone. Uh, we had to do this really quick because I totally forgot to do that. Uh, Trucker Dan sent us $5 before the show. Hey, hey thank you, Dan. We thank appreciate it. Uh, which also leads me to welcome to the hood. Uh, so you can use YouTube's Super Chat function to sponsor the chat. Uh, and we will give back some rewards for certain price points. So if you give us $5, we'll write your name in Sharpie on the hood of our Lincoln Mark V Continental Diamond Jubilee Special Edition, something like that. $10, you get a bumper sticker. $25, you get some patches. And for $50, we'll send you a TFL truck hat. Uh, option, you can have the red one or the black one. And if you want, we'll sign it. Uh, just send us an email to info at tflcar.com. If you do donate more than $10, and we'll be sure to uh, just send us your address, and we can send these things on to you guys. Uh, okay, so we've talked about Ford. Who else is killing off their cars in favor of crossover? Nearly every manufacturer in one way or another is, is starting to do that or is in the process of doing it. The next one on the list is Mitsubishi, Mit uh, which is one of the most legendary names in rallying thanks to the Lancer Evolution. Uh, the Evo 10 was really awesome. You get it with 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, rally pedigree, and, you know, it depends on who you ask, but this thing can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and in some cases even beat a Subaru STI. Uh, our racing driver, Paul, owns one. His is heavily modified. Yeah. Um, but they were really awesome cars. And what are they making now, Nathan? Uh, well, they're making the Outlander Sport and also the Eclipse Cross. Mm, which are not uh, race cars. Mitsubishi Lancer Evos. Uh, <laughs> the thing about the Lancer was um, the Lancer had the, the bare models for years. And the thing is, is that Mitsubishi never went and really did a serious refresh or a serious update. And they had the, the Lancer GT, which was actually at the time a really good front-wheel drive car. It had good power, great manual transmission. It did great, and it was inexpensive. And then you could bounce up and go all the way up to the Evo. And that was an animal. Some of, some of my fastest times on two of the racetracks that I frequent were in that car. It's that good. And unfortunately, it's been gone for a while. And what Mitsubishi has done is they've removed all the cars from their lineup with one exception. The Mirage. <laughs> Which, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a car. It's one of the most unloved cars out oh, there. However, awesome. it is, for a non-hybrid vehicle, one of the most efficient. It's very efficient and very inexpensive, actually. Extremely. It's one of the least expensive vehicles to own. And I think it's good to note, also, especially this Eclipse Cross, you and I have taken that of Goldmine Hill. Yep. And while Mitsubishi, ha Mitsubishi has ditched their uh, the Lancer Evo. They have still baked a lot of their knowledge from rallying for so many years into that vehicle because that thing is exceptionally good off road, yeah. especially considering it has a CVT. And also the the tires were not up to the task. So yeah, no, well yeah. done with their all wheel drive system. I, that made it up stage three, which is something that of, of Goldmine Hill, which not a lot of cars can say that they did. Um, all right, enough about Mitsubishi. I think it's time to move on to our next manufacturer, Mercedes Benz. So. I want to preface Mercedes-Benz by saying that Mercedes <coughs> does still sell quite a few AMG models here in the U.S. Yeah. They have the C63, the C43, the E63, the E43, 
the CLA 43, the GLA 43. There's a plenty of cars that Mercedes still A lot sells. of 43s. Um, but specifically, the GLA class is one that's, well, a little suspect because in Europe they get the A class just as an AMG model on its own. They get, you know, the A is this one, the uh, A43 AMG. But here in the U.S., we don't get the A43, we get the GLA 43. Mm -hmm. GLA 45. Excuse me, 45. And the differentiator between the GLA 45 and the A45 mm. is that the GLA 45 is a crossover, basically. It's kind of lifted, it has some plastic cladding and yeah. stuff like that to look a little more rugged and off-roady. Uh, but we don't get the normal low-slung A-Class A45 AMG here in the U.S., which is kind of strange. Uh, before we go on, it uh, looks like we're frozen over here, so you're going to have to throw the questions at us. Uh -oh. We did freeze. So Just our computer. You guys are probably still fine. We're not questions at the moment. So okay, good deal. Uh, Mercedes, uh, however, makes a, <laughs> as many Mer AMG models as they have as cars. They probably have, you know, more if not the same amount if not more that are suvs right they have the uh, glc the gl e uh, gl a am i getting all these right glc G G G L G L A G L E gla glc gle and gls as a side note mercedes naming convention is completely bonkers and extremely confusing but regardless they do make a lot of amg suvs as well and our suspicion is that it might be the case that these models tend to stick around longer than the sedans and little hatchbacks do. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the least expensive and or easiest to acquire Mercedes-Benz products are their crossovers. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be honest, BMW is actually kind of starting to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, BMW has, what, from 1 till 8 now? Yeah. X models? Or is uh, it X7? X7. X7. One through seven. They have X1, the X2 which don't have M models, although they have M performance packages. And performance packages. The X3 has an M40i, mm -hmm. which is actually quite fast. There's the X4, which has an M40i. The X5, which has an M model. The X6, which has an M model. And coming soon is the X7, which I don't think they've announced an M-specific model, but I'm sure it will have I'm some M performance sure goodies will, yeah. uh, in the very near future. Point is... The German manufacturers actually do a pretty good job of keeping around the cars, but they're also really starting to make some high-performance SUVs. Yep. Um, time to move on to another manufacturer. It's Mazda. So uh, the car that have the cars that have been gotten rid of for Mazda are the Mazda Speed model. So the Mazda Speed, Speed 3, Three and the Speed Six. And the Speed Six, and then the RX Eight. Uh, and instead, now we get well, crossovers. That's right. We get the CX Five, the CX Three, the CX Nine. Yeah. So those are good crossovers. We all rate them highly, and they have probably some of the most driver-friendly overall designs that yeah. we know of. And I think they're pretty good-looking, too, personally. However, they're not cars. As such, you said higher. You do not have that same power and traction that you did back when they had the CX-3. Sorry. When they had the Mazda Speed 3 and the Mazda Speed 6. Now, rumor has it they haven't completely thrown out the idea of re returning to a speed model. And supposedly, it's not completely lost that they will come back with an RX sometime in the future. Most likely something that will be, I don't know, a hybrid with yeah, a rotary engine something or something like that. like that. Who knows? But the bottom line is those cars disappeared, and what we're left with is, for the most part, SUVs, crossovers. Yeah, I think, dynamically speaking, you're right. The, the CX models from Mazda are actually some of the best crossovers and SUVs to drive compared to a lot of on the competition. Road. On the road, at least. Yeah, yeah, they're actually pretty fun to drive. Uh, and the CX-5 makes a lot of money for Mazda. That's probably their biggest money maker. Um, I know you have experience with some Mazda Speed models. Yep. I, my roommate, all through college, had a Mazda Speed 3. Those are really fun cars. Uh, and they, they've they put a turbocharged engine into the Mazda 6. Like oh, they even the, had all-wheel drive with the Mazda 6. Yeah. With the, yeah, I mean, they've done a lot of stuff with it. But the new one now has a oh, turbocharged engine. The new one right? does as well. Yes, it I, does. I mean, they have, like, all the steps to go there, but they're favoring models like crossovers and SUVs because they make a lot more money for them. So it might be some time before we get to see another hot hatch like the Mazda Speed 3 or a really cool all-wheel drive turbocharged sedan like the Mazda Speed 6. Um, can we just have, like, can we have one Mazda? Do we get one? What do you guys want? If Mazda came back with one performance model, Mazda Speed 3, Mazda Speed 6, or the RX-8, which one would you prefer? Let us know in the chat. 
Although I uh, say that, and this computer seems to have frozen a little bit. So, so we'll I, have to get it I, off of I our producer. probably can't read it. By the way, some of you guys were wondering about the voice that comes from behind the camera. That is our producer, Zach. Yeah, he helps us out. He's also one of our main editors. Yeah, he, he's, he's making sure that we don't say anything too stupid. Um, okay, let's move on to another manufacturer. Yeah. And this one is, we're going a little throwback here. Way back. Uh, it's Pontiac. So we're going we're gonna to surmise here that the Aztec pretty much killed the brand's future here in the U.S. So when Pontiac introduced the Aztec, they put a lot of money and time behind it, and it was obviously a flop. Um, I know some people out there like them, like, you know, whatever. Um, we had one for a little while, and nope, didn't make me like it at all. No, I didn't like it, no. It, the design was polarizing. The amount of money they put into the development was ridiculous, and apparently part of the reason why it turned into what it turned into had to do with the bean counters, which General Motors has a lot of problems with. So fast forward a few years later, Pontiac start, they want to be the excitement brand. They want to be the driver's brand. Someone actually said from General Motors that they wanted to be the General Motors BMW. And they started building vehicles like the G8 and the G6 and the Solstice. And these were vehicles that actually had some performance potential, especially the G8, GXP. Yeah. Yeah. That car was ridiculously fast. Also the GTO. Unfortunately, three things happened. One, nobody bought them, or very few people bought them. Two, there wasn't enough money to continue the brand, and they felt that out of all the brands that should be removed, that one and Oldsmobile were on the chopping block. And three, we could all blame the Aztec because it's the easiest vehicle to blame for their demise. <laughs> it is the Without a blame. doubt. Uh, this is a you terrible know, idea. Gosh. And they sold it in gold, Nathan. Why did they have to paint some of them gold? Uh, yeah, Pontiac made a lot of really cool cars. I, I actually uh, have this plan in the back of my head to buy a G8 GXP at some point, uh, hoping that they don't get too expensive before oh, they will. I can afford to do that, which they probably will. But it's like basically a Holden Commodore with a giant V8. You can get it with a manual transmission. Like yep. you said, they were, just, they were crazy fast. Uh, and then Chevy made the Chevy SS, which is kind of a, it's the same thing. Same basic thing. But here's the thing that connects it to crossovers. During that time, first of all, technically speaking, the Aztec was a crossover. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work out very well, obviously. No. However, during the last few years of Pontiac, they did release some other crossovers, including the Torrent and, I believe, the Vibe. The Vibe was based on the Toyota Matrix. Now, these were crossovers, and these vehicles did sell okay for Pontiac, indicating that that could have very well been their next direction. So the excitement thing, if they had survived, I guarantee you it would have been SUVs and crossovers for Pontiac too. All right, I've the, I got the chat to reload. I've been Yay. reading through the comments. It looks like a lot of people are really interested in having a Mazda, C, Mazda Speed 6 come back, which I think would be kind of cool. You can they're actually, almost there. They're, they're, they are two driven wheels and a manual transmission away from being pretty much there with the Mazda 6 Turbo. Uh, so come on, Mazda, make it happen. We can, we, you know... People would buy it. Some people would definitely. So, and that's the, at the end of the day, you know, it's a question of what. Mazda is a very small company, and they don't yeah. have any big deep pockets yeah. backing them. So every time they put their money into research and design and development, unfortunately, they need to get their money back. And so by building something like a turbocharged four cylinder big car and making it sport, you know, something that can go up against, say, I don't know, BMW. Well, that's going to cost a lot of money, and then if only a handful of people buy it, it doesn't make any sense. And per this list, actually, I think, frankly, the most likely way we're going to get a Mazda Speed product back is going to be on the CX-5 or the CX-3. That yeah, just seems I, like the most likely place that they would put that brand back into the Mazda lineup. If Mazda were to take that big turbocharged engine they currently have in the CX-9 and in the Mazda 6 mm -hmm. and shove that into the CX-3... Oh. That would be sweet. That would be such a all-wheel so drive fun. with that type of power. Oh my god! You'd go you know, running around, embarrassing you know Subarus and whatnot. It'd be a lot of fun. So something to think about. All right, time I, to keep. Oh. Now before we do, oh, uh, oh, oh. Zach is a Mazda fan too, so he might have yeah, some good insight. Yeah, I'm a Mazda here. fan boy. I'll be the first to admit it. So all right, fire away. I understand, you know why we're not getting a Mazda Speed Three, why we're not getting an RX-8, even though it disappoints me deeply. Um, it's just not financially viable for a small company to heavily invest in something as thirsty as the rotary or, as, you know, in something like the Mazda Speed that doesn't sell. However, particularly in the case of the Mazda Speed 3, 
I think there's a case for it now that Ford is pulling the focus out of our market and the That's Focus ST. Yeah. Because that, that Mazda Speed 3 is on the Focus platform. Yeah. Um, but now that the Focus is gone, there's a little bit of an opening there in the hot hatch market. Others are joining as well, like Hyundai with Hyundai the Veloster with the Veloster N. N. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. So there is a little bit of a vacuum, and maybe, yeah. perhaps, it's something that Mazda would consider. I think at the end of the day, they need to make sure that they can fill a, a decent quota for a couple of years. Yeah. And there's a lot of development that goes behind these cars. So, yeah, maybe they can figure something out. I still think that the a quick way of solving this is to shove a huge turbocharged engine inside of the CX-3 yeah. because they already have all-wheel drive. You know, I would accept that as, That'd be really as, fun. as, a, as an option. Uh, Teddy's Lift World asks, Mike, what's your favorite hot hatch? Well, I own a GTI, so I'm going to have to say it's the Volkswagen GTI, but I actually am really curious to drive that Hyundai Veloster N uh, because I've heard wonderful things about it. The Focus ST was really fun. I cross-shopped that when I was searching for my GTI. Um, actually, one of my favorites is not quite on the same level of performance, but the Elantra, the Hyundai Elantra GT Sport uh, is a little hatchback with a 1.6 liter turbo. Great uh, car. Around 200 horsepower and you can get it with a manual transmission or a dual clutch. That is a really good little car too. But the GTI is still my favorite hot hatchback, um, which is why I bought one. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to our last manufacturer. It's Lamborghini. Um, and we're going to lump this in with a couple other manufacturers because Lamborghini, like some other Italian sports car manufacturers or supercar manufacturers, are kind of starting down the SUV road, uh, specifically Lamborghini with the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. SUVs, why? Urus. Urus? Yes. Urus. Yeah, Urus. Urus. Yes. Before, Urus. before we continue on the Urus thing... Uh, understand that Lamborghini initially started as a tractor company and then went from there to building something very special, which was the LM model. Um, that yeah. was a serious that SUV. LM 002, that thing is that so cool. That thing was bat crazy. And I drove one, yeah. and it was amazing. You drove one? Yeah. When yeah, did you yeah. drive one? In Los Angeles. Oh, my in God. In Long Beach. Oh, of course it, it was in Los Angeles. Yeah. Jeez, oh, that's where I drove the majority of the yeah. exotic yeah. cars. I've actually driven older ones at least. Mm -hmm. And it is a beast. And the thing is, going from that to like a Hummer, you go into the Hummer, you're like, what? And then you drive the Lamborghini, and you basically think you're a cocaine dealer named, you know, Huey, mm. who's supposed to be living in Florida. It's right. awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a truly awesome vehicle. So, uh, yeah. And then they go and they build the Earth. And that's a crossover. That's not an SUV. Uh, yeah, it's a crossover. Okay, it's, there's no frame or anything like no, that. No, it's, it's, it's a crossover. It's a crossover. And, and frankly speaking, the uh, name and the overall design, I'm a little disappointed with. I don't know how you guys feel. Uh, I actually, as far as crossovers go, I think it looks really good because it looks like a Lambo. Yes. But it's built on the Audi Q8 platform, so it is a crossover. Uh, it's going to be, it is really, really fast, which is kind of cool. Uh, but it's one of those things that... Maybe makes Lamborghini Purists a little worried about the future. Now, of course, Lamborghini is not killing any of their cars right now. Yeah. But the question is, is this going to take away from the brand's reputation for building supercars like the Aventador SVJ or the, uh, what's, what's the Huracan Performante, or, you know, or any, any number of their insanely bonkers hypercars, which they've been known for for the past oh, what, 50, 50 years ish? More, yeah, more, more than, than that. that. Uh, and, and continuing <clears throat> from there, you know, the same question is going for Ferrari. There's rumors now that Ferrari is going to be building uh, an SUV or a crossover. Well, technically speaking, they already do. If you look at the Maserati Levante mm, yeah. and their newest one, what's coming out very soon, which has a twin turbocharged Ferrari sourced V8. Yeah, the, the Trofeo. Trofeo. And the GTS. Those vehicles have Ferrari components, yeah. so in many ways, yeah, that's as closest to a Ferrari SUV as I've seen, or a crossover. But will Ferrari themselves go to anything that has four doors or a crossover? Well, initially the answer was no, but remember a while ago when Ferrari said, we'll never build an all-wheel drive vehicle? Yeah. And then they said, we'll never build a hybrid? Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping they have a better name for whatever they're not going to be building, which they will be building, other than is. So hopefully it'll be something a little bit better. Um, but at the same time, God, it hurts, doesn't it? It's a little weird. Can you imagine Ferrari with a crossover? Mm. 
you know, something that goes banging around Beverly Hills malls in That's order to buy dresses. It'll just be in Beverly Hills. That's the only place they're, sell- they're going to sell when, them. When Porsche initially talked about building a crossover SUV, I freaked and I, I was inconsolable. I, I hid in the trunk of one of Roman's cars for nine weeks. I, 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 you know, I barely ate. I lost, you know, no weight. That's but how we knew when winter was over that year, actually. That I actually came, came out, out of the, the vehicle. Trunk, yeah. But, I mean, think about it, guys. I mean, the, these are dedicated, serious racing brands and sports yeah. cars, super sports cars. Now, McLaren swears they're not going to build one. They say they are not going to build a crossover or an SUV. But so did Porsche. Yep. Exactly. And I'm sure for a long time, too, Lamborghini was saying, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And you know who it was already announced that they're very interested in crossovers? Lotus. Mm. Lotus! God! Is it going to be really tiny and hard to get into still? Well, of course. Yeah. And then it's, it, you know, it'll probably have a Toyota engine or right, something yeah, like yeah, that, so it'll run for a while. Yeah. Guys, what's happening? It's a weird world we live in, Nathan. I mean, the next thing you know, you're going to hear about some company getting rid of all of their automatic and manual transmissions in favor of uh, CVTs. No, don't say that. Why would you say that? Don't oh, say wait, that. someone's no, 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 already no. done that. No, they haven't done that. Who's done that? Oh. There's some Japanese company oh, that's rumored it? to be doing this. <laughs> Which reminds me, by the way, before we even come close to closing this out, we wanted right. to say a special congratulations to Subaru and their Ascent. Ascender? Ascent. 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 For having 19 cup holders, you smashed the record. Congrats. <laughs> you did it, guys. I, yeah, congratulations. 19 cup holders. 19 cup holders. Might be missing a few welds, but 19 cup holders. 19. Sweet. What do you do with 19 cup holders? You have a, just a lot of extra stuff, man. All right, well, while people are thinking about the fact that Subaru has 19 cup holders in their new seven-seater SUV. That's another company, by the way, going into more and more SUVs. Remember that at one point in time, the closest thing they had to an SUV was the Forester. And everything else was a wagon that was slightly lifted. Yeah. Now, pretty much everything is the size of a crossover. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's true. Um, we have two bonus questions today. So you've selected a picture of the day. Yes. And I have just come up with something on the spot. Okay. So we have here a model of a GTI. Actually, I totally forgot to mention that when we were talking about hot hatches. Here's a model of a GTI. And my question is... Can any of you guys guess what scale this model is? It's in giant letters on the back of the box, so I know exactly what it says, but I doubt that any of you can figure it out. So if you guys can post a comment in the comment section and tell me what scale, it's got to be a one, two, something, uh, then I'll give you a shout out. And there's Nathan's picture of the day. What do you guys think? Huh? Oh my gosh. Come on, guys. Now, you don't have to say the specific car in terms of what it is, because it is... A mix mash, a Frankenstein, if you will, oh. of components put hint? together. Yes, um, but at the very least, name the movie it came from. It should be pretty easy for old farts like me in my age category. So they're naming the movie. Anna yeah. Oh, no, it'd be nice to name the driver. I mean, once again, it's a Frankenstein of vehicles uh-huh. in okay. terms of the amount of components it has inside of it. By the way, you're looking at that and thinking, Corvette, no. it's modeled to look like one, but it's actually a rear-engine car, and no, the engine you're seeing out of the back, eh, it's not real. You know what's real? Underneath that engine is a six-cylinder Corvair engine, ah. and it's hooked up to a three-speed manual transmission. Really? Yep. So, yeah, a movie car. You know, they do stuff like that for various reasons. Are, are, are any of it, is this right? Is what that okay? Saying? Is that it? Nope. Nope. That one? Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, close, Ron. Uh, McK- you you got the first half, but it, there's a number that follows the the name, because otherwise you're talking about a modern movie. And this is a movie oh, that happened. Is that it? There we go, uh, Joseph Peoples. Yeah. Uh, race 2000. 2000. That's Joseph. correct. No one has gotten the scale of this GTI so far. Because so it's while we're waiting of... for somebody to figure that out. There's a really good comment earlier from Ben Trees who said. They need to bring back the Buick Grand National, Ooh. as well as the Chevrolet Caprice Classic, mm. and the Cavalier. I'm not so sure about that one. Cavalier? Buick Century and Buick LeSabre, again, not so sure. And Cadillac Fleetwood Brown. That one I do agree on. That thing was a tank. There was a dude at Bandemir a few Especially weeks ago. Especially Grand National, I do agree on that one. Yeah, yeah that Grand had National. a Grand National that was like mildly modified. And he was running, like, 12s pretty easily with that thing. Up here at a mile above sea level. Uh, I also just think that those look 
are really cool. They're yeah, really there's a lot of clones oh, out oh, there. Sean Du got it. It's 143rd scale. Congratulations, Sean. You did it. There right, it is. Sean. 143rd. It says it in... Why do you torture our viewers with something like oh, that? Oh, and then uh, Nara, Naramson A got it as well. 143rd. There we That's go. That's a weird bottle size. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, guys, um, so were there any questions before we get going? We're actually a little bit on yeah, the early side. We so... finished a little earlier today. Yep. Yeah. Let me um, check. Now, listen, while we're looking over questions, tomorrow is a big day because yeah. we've got Mr. Truck coming in. Ask Mr. Truck. Yeah. He has been asking for it. Woo doggies. Now you get to ask the man himself. Yep, he's going to be moseying up here as he tips his hat and says howdy. Mm -hmm. That's about as good as I've got with the, is that, is that? the normal Western. Oh, he's got he'll, he'll be wearing his, his boots and, and his six guns. And a vest. He he'll have vest. a vest on. He likes vests. And he'll be asking Tommy if he drank his milk. Tommy, <laughs> you drink your milk? <laughs> and, Make sure you drink your milk, Tommy. Offering to teach him how to shave. And also that. Uh, what else does Ken recommend? <laughs> what, what, he oh, tells, well, he's you got, telling you got goats. A, he likes goats. He likes goats. And you have to lubricate your axles. Don't forget uh, to lubricate and your, your axles. Oh, and he always has truck mats. Uh, but the, the ball, you, you got to lubricate the ball. Oh, gosh. I'm telling you what he says. Oh, Jesus. Okay. And on that note. And on that, on that note. note. Okay, Thank guys. you guys so much for tuning in today. We hope you liked this episode. Uh, we just decided it would be fun to talk about crossovers for a little bit because... I, 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 I'm, I'm under the impression that many of you are like me and you're a little hesitant. You so, want to like them. So. They make some sense. But at the same time, sense. they are usurping cars. Usurp was a nice 10 cent. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Trucker Dan, once again, $10. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Uh, my it, service Dan. trucks today, and I couldn't keep up with the video this time. I hope you all have a good day. Can y'all just do a Q&A? A Q &A? Oh, like a Q&A episode? We can do something like that. You know, maybe next week, if, if everything works out, what we may be able to do is do a topic and then mix it up with some Q&A along the way. And if that's the case, we'll let you know in advance so that way you guys can queue up your questions. Does yeah. that sound all right, Mr. Yeah, Producer? Yeah, that's a good idea. All righty. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll have a Q&A sometime very soon. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll mix it up with some topics. Now, bear in mind, lots of topics coming up, guys. We've got auto shows coming up. We've got oh, SEMA so coming up. up. We have a debut of everything from the new RAV4 all the way over to a brand new Cadillac that are coming out right around the corner. So lots of stuff and more truck stuff too. So and that Ford Edge ST. We're going to be driving And the that Ford Edge soon. ST. I'm actually looking forward to it because I'm hoping it will blow my mind and I'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, who cares about the focus? I won't do that. I won't do that. It might do that. It might do that. We'll have to see. Okay, guys. See you guys next Take time. Take care. Play us out. Back Play. pipes. Oh, I forgot the volume. What? Every time. I always forget the volume. <laughs> I'm not Irish or Scottish, but I love bagpipes. Really? Yeah, I love them. Why do you love like them? Huh? Why do you like bagpipes? I just think they're cool. Especially when you got a rock. Yeah. Rock bagpipes. They're the best bagpipes. I'm liking it. <laughs>